конечно. Шановные, шановные зебр. Uh, dear guests, thank you for coming. I hope that uh, our discussion uh, will uh, meet your uh, expectations. Uh, uh, the discussion Radio Unites Ukraine topic uh, uh, will give the opportunity uh, to uh, our colleagues uh, to join us. We will be talking about the uh, information environment, uh, how to overcome the resistance and uh, our uh, participants of the discussion are very interesting uh, persons. Mm, uh, first, uh, I will give you uh, some introductory remarks. Uh, uh, on the start of September, a bright journalist, Volodymyr Naskov, uh, uh, invited me to his students to Kharkiv University after Karazin, and there were 17 people who um, are studying journalism, and I asked them who listens to radio. There were two hands up out of 34. After that, uh, uh, those who do not listen to radio, tell us why you do not uh, listen to the radio. Thirteen persons uh, started with, I have never uh, been listening to radio besides when uh, the cases when I am in a taxi or at my uh, grandparents' house and... Uh, uh, the contact of people with radio sometimes happen when people do not even perceive this five seconds or six seconds uh, can attract attention of a person so now uh, I would like uh, uh, to give the floor to uh, our guests uh, and give uh, thesis uh, what is the role of radio in overcoming the lack of communication between the occupied territories and the rest of Ukraine. Let's uh, start with Inna Kuznetsova. Now I'm the first, okay? Uh, when we started talking about who and how listen to the radio and on the day of broadcasting and TV those who have never been thinking about radio but uh, the radio called on those people to unite Ukraine you know Stanislav Vasina Vasin, who did not leave Donetsk, uh, oh, he is a philosopher, he could left uh, uh, Donetsk uh, and uh, he could not be a broadcaster, uh, um, speaker on radio and starting with June 2nd we do not have contact with him, we know that he was taught you to uh, we do not know where he is now, and those who taught you to him, they even announced uh, that uh, he has just disappeared uh, on local TV. So our task, I think, is to unite the country thanks to the radio. Thank you. Now, Vladimir Politula, please, your... Uh, turn. I would like also to tell about our colleagues in Crimea who are working for Crimrealia Resource and Radio Crimreali, uh, which uh, also uh, consciously or unconsciously, directly or indirectly unite Ukraine and first of all 
Микола Сумунхо is persecuted and uh, he is sentenced uh, just for um, voicing out his opinions. Uh, I will not name other persons due for the well-known reasons and our radio Krim Reale has been working more than three years. First we were operating for those people who were looking for our wave on the medium wave range. Now we are working for Crimeans who just drive cars or <coughs> uh, just uh, for chance by chance uh, uh, get our wave and listen to our radio this way we expand our audience for uh, ordinary Crimeans uh, who are conscious Ukrainians and those who have uh, rejected Ukrainian citizenship and new Crimeans, so-called uh, new Crimeans uh, who are uh, who have moved from the Russian Federation, but this source of information is unique. Thank you, Dmitro Horkin, please. Uh, I would like to uh, <coughs> congratulate everyone with the day of radio. In this situation, uh, the physics of radio uh, even contributes to this uh, um, role of radio when in 2014 the occupation of Crimea and warfare started in Donbass and when uh, uh, short wave uh, um, receivers were uh, switched on and uh, those who had those receivers uh, they <coughs> listen to the radio and they got information what happened uh, in this uh, 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 way radio can unite people starting with 2014 uh, now we also have uh, our our uh, broadcasting to the occupied territories. Uh, Andriy Kulikov uh, has already said to us that in we have 20, 30 stations uh, of uh, medium uh, range. Uh, the radio remain popular when you drive car or you stay home. There are also modern applications, software applications, but radio uh, has great future because uh, its coverage is very high. And Krim Raelia demonstrated us uh, that uh, the, we can get feedback. When there was blackout, uh, our website uh, almost failed. So. We do not have uh, the opportunity, uh, the uh, occupational um, authorities didn't have the opportunity to switch on the equipment uh, for broadcasting and then uh, uh, it was said by the occupational authorities that uh, our Krim Raelia radio should be um, destroyed. Uh, thank you, Andre. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I would like to congratulate you on your professional holiday. This holiday uh, is needed. It unites us and it is a, uh, an opportunity, a chance for us to talk about Radio I uh, represent Radio Hayat and Krim News. Uh, 
uh, we have joined the group not so long ago we were in a news agency in Crimea and here after occupation we got the frequency and we broadcast uh, for the Ukraine uh, and to Crimea I have been uh, thinking about our connection uh, uh, with the peninsula and uh, this is complicated uh, thing to cover the territory which is out of reach. Uh, those mass media who are working on occupied territories, they work in a completely different environment. This is not uh, mass media activities uh, in uh, on you usual territories, uh, uh, the methods uh, of addressing audience different are uh, different. Uh, for our um, broadcasting station, this is the chance to uh, keep contact with our people uh, who continue to live uh, in uh, the peninsula and the uh, repressions continue there uh, by national by nationality by national origin and uh, in one of the areas in the village of Pushkin uh, the teacher she wa is not her house has been searched and uh, the one activist house uh, was sh uh, shot uh, on uh, uh, this night uh, this is the reality in which we live uh, uh, radio for us, as Mr. Kulikov said, is the opportunity to keep connected with those people who remain in the occupied territories. Uh, I would like to answer Mr. Kulikov's question. Stories from life, my diploma says, is what the radio in the Second World War times, one of the most interesting uh, stations, broadcasting stations. It, uh, it was Dnipro station, which was nine uh, railway cars big. Uh, I even uh, could not uh, imagine that uh, I will be addressed addressing uh, the problem of uh, uh, disseminating uh, content uh, on the um, uh, occupied territories during war time. I thought it is only uh, the experience of previous generation, but now it appears so that Krim Reale and Donbass Reale projects, uh, uh, we address them and we also should address the problem of uh, um, signal um, we should cover the territories uh, uh, despite uh, those uh, jamming uh, which is uh, um, now in place. So uh, whether the radio is accessible, whether the radio is uh, uh, the times change if uh, uh, radio f uh, freedom, radio liberty, uh, it is uh, broadcasting from Ukraine and Ukrainian broadcasting station they face jamming on the territory of their own state. This is one of distinctive teachers of today. I was at Donbass really a uh, radio office. There were phone calls of conscious uh, listeners. Uh, they did not uh, agree to all uh, um, opinions but it was respect which uh, they demonstrated because they had debates where they invited experts this means that uh, uh, your opinion is valued by your listeners my colleagues I would like to say uh, I 
because I know the, uh, I visited Radio Liberty and Radio Hayat. Uh, please give us uh, at least one example of best practices uh, and the worst practices which uh, do not give uh, expected results. Uh, who is ready, please? Tatiana, please. So I remember such an example, the example of the summer, when we dealt with such topic that was not noticed by national media and was absent in the information space that occupation power of uh, occupied territories said that uh, people go to uncontrolled territories for different benefits and these were many tens of uh, uh, issues uh, recreation uh, re uh, cycling and uh, um, other things cult cultural events uh, and uh, educational reasons so we found a lot of interesting facts uh, that uh, this was um, not the case and uh, it uh, didn't uh, overload the massive information from that side. So it continued for many months and our publication was just one. So we should continue and uh, I uh, uh, want that uh, national media would pay attention to such topics. And what did you do in order to bring attention of the national media to this issue? And I came here today. What? So answering your question, Andre, what is the best, what we could show at this moment? Answering this question, I would like to mentioned that the fact that we launched our broadcast and this is a positive trend and uh, this is the positive indicator for the development of mainland Ukraine because the opening of radio station in Crimea, especially national uh, radio station of Crimean Tatars was a difficult um, thing and uh, uh, starting from the moment of return of Crimean Tatars to their own territory and uh, uh, the sad events of 2014, only one radio station Midan was launched in 2006. Uh, and uh, this is the only case. And now, despite all the difficulties and the temporary occupation, the appearance of one more national Ukrainian Crimean Tata uh, station is the positive fact. And uh, I attended the contest at the National Council and uh, the approach of the members of the Council to national broadcasters. Uh, they. Uh, this approach really positively surprised me. They understand that uh, there should be more such uh, stations. And the fact uh, that is negative, I do not want to speak about negative things, maybe about temporary difficulties. We have a lot of work ahead of us uh, in technical area, in creative area, and especially in connection with occupied territories. We work for this territory. We say there about events in Ukraine and we speak about uh, uh, events in Crimea, in Crimea for uh, mainland Ukraine and people come and they um, have the opportunity to speak and uh, uh, now we are in the process and these problems will be solved. Vladimir is next. Thank you. I do not want to say about failures. Each of the projects of our radio, each of them from the beginning, uh, it was rather difficult. Then something uh, was uh, launched and Alexandra Yankovsky and Katerina Krecha, she is present here. They created a wonderful radio team. And we started when, with one hour of broadcasting. Now this is 24 hours, and we have three hours of original content. 
and some programs from the start for us they uh, we thought that no one um, listened to us but then we saw that we have feedback and there are people who phoned and uh, uh, sometimes uh, up to 10 calls arrived and then these calls stopped and we didn't know why then we tried to analyze why and uh, uh, how the campaign is ongoing against Crimea uh, Realia in uh, um, the controlled uh, uh, outlets when people are just threatened. Uh, and uh, last week uh, they deliver a rigid campaign of threatening those experts and people from different views, for, even with pro-Russian views, who have uh, the courage or uh, to join uh, to uh, to uh, join the work of Crimea Realia and express their position and to join discussions and now there is a really tough campaign against these people in Russian media and uh, today in the morning I got a warning from the Ministry of Justice of Russian Federation they threaten us that if we try to register according to their laws we will have uh, some consequences. And uh, we see that uh, uh, Crimean Parmesan was an interesting project, uh, but people uh, didn't properly get it and best Crimean journalist participated in this. Now we see that it is really popular. And this is not just broadcasting, this is also YouTube, the, internet broadcasting, Facebook and in the social media and we see the discussions there that are ongoing uh, about these programs and uh, on the whole I have a positive outlook of the radio including uh, Crimea Realia radio and not only our radio station but other stations they um, um, are trying to uh, reach uh, the audience of uh, Crimea, but we see the interest of the audience of Crimea and we see the response of occupation power. And now I would like to mention the case during the first days of uh, the broadcasting of Donbass Realia. A man called from the occupied territory and uh, uh, spoke with the sound engineer, so with the person who was on site, and uh, he said, and uh, what do you know about what is go uh, going on here? And he said, yes, I know about the situation. My mother lives not far from you. She is in occupied territories, and they uh, uh, spoke spoke uh, well and now many people phoned, uh, previously they were afraid uh, to phone, now they uh, speak more, some of them are still frightened, they just leave their message um, and uh, what I wanted to say is that what we uh, started to go to gray area and uh, also in the uh, cities and towns uh, that are in control territory and it gave opportunity to people to participate in uh, programs not just to listen to some speakers from Kiev but to be uh, in the air to meet the heads of enterprises uh, and uh, to speak with these people to understand the problems and uh, when they came and there was the audience and it was uh, broadcast in YouTube and then uh, there was an hourly pro uh, program for one hour and uh, this was uh, a good example and uh, um, also we didn't uh, have uh, lots of these uh, um, to us, but we will try to do more. Uh, so, uh, so you had the biggest organization that is present here, and uh, 
we were speaking about broadcasting uh, that is directed to occupied territories and uh, you have more responsibilities you broadcast uh, uh, all over ukraine and um, uh, this broadcasting is needed not only to uh, for those who live in occupied territories but also those who live uh, in uh, all uh, ukraine so i would like to say that in 2014 uh, the uh, the uh, transmitters were uh, renewed, and uh, uh, those that uh, didn't uh, were out of operation for a long time, and they started to broadcast to Crimea and Donbas. And uh, at the end of uh, uh, 2014, we started to um, transmit. Uh, 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 to I am, um, uh, and this is a really powerful transmitter. Uh, there is no uh, transmitter that is more powerful, and it can transmit to uh, Europe and part of uh, Russian Federation, and you cannot jam these uh, 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 broadcasting and uh, for them, uh, it is difficult to reach it, to block it. They had Mayak before, but they do not have it now. So starting from December, we started the Donbass UA on the first channel of Ukrainian radio. And this is, as Andrei said, the, with the biggest coverage and uh, to provide also broadcasting to occupied territories. And uh, in order to inform about what is going on in Donbass. This was time of active military actions, and uh, uh, we were able to each week go to the um, zone of military actions and to uh, provide interviews from there, those who live and fight, uh, with those who live and fight there, and also this broadcasting um, also transformed into the program about uh, people from Donbass who uh, fled Donbass. And these were successful stories. It was in 2014-2015, IDPs from Donbass who live in different areas of Ukraine uh, provided information and it was inspiration for such people. We started to work with NGOs who support IDPs and we had really interesting stories and heroes each time in our studio. And when we speak about uh, these successes, these uh, portrait interviews, I uh, helped to create this program and uh, former uh, engineer of Lugansk power plant who uh, opened near Kiev uh, her studio and now uh, she uh, does business and employs people from Kiev and also stereotypes that were provided by the mass media um, by uh, half literate journalists or irresponsible politicians and the deputy minister of uh, um, uh, th th who uh, provided incorrect statements about IDPs and mass media about uh, what IDPs do. And also there were special projects uh, we did monthly about Donbass Opera and uh, um, about the workshops and the people who uh, fled from there. So also the second direction we had, the uh, uh, Russian uh, the broadcasting in Russian at this uh, very powerful frequency. And we said that this will be an interactive uh, broadcasting. And uh, in uh, the world, uh, um, uh, we, uh, so I remember first programs about Crimea. Uh, they phoned us from uh, uh, Kerch and the uh, Krasnodarsky region, uh, uh, and uh, now for us the task is to preserve uh, this broadcasting to these territories, and uh, this is really energy consuming, taking into account the specificity of this mid-range transmitters. And we carry out negotiations with our Germany counterparts who can provide uh, digital mid-range transmitters that are even more powerful than what we have. But uh, 
they uh, also consume less energy and uh, now we plan and we are grateful uh, we didn't have enough of Crimean uh, programs and uh, together with Crimea Realia we will have uh, such a um, program uh, this is not for occupied Crimea, but for Crimeans who live outside Crimea, and we have wonderful program on a Saturday in Uc uh, uh, Ukrainian. And uh, this program is about what is going on in Crimea, and there is uh, f good feedback. And uh, also uh, on this, uh, we have these feedbacks uh, on the site, and uh, uh, also we have you a Crimea channel and uh, we lack Crimean Tata uh, program because uh, um, not many journalists, this is a limited number of uh, uh, people who can work with the Crimean Tata language uh, who, uh, and uh, also there is uh, there are not many actors who can work uh, in this language and we search for such people in order uh, to uh, launch um, our program in Crimean Tatar language for uh, Ukraine and including occupied territories. So we understand our responsibility and the main issue maybe that these projects, they should be interactive. And uh, what I heard from my colleagues, uh, I believe we succeed in this. We should communicate, but it is really difficult. And uh, uh, we spoke about the topics of documents, about passports for those people who live in occupied territories of Donbass. And people phone uh, to studio and the uh, woman uh, called and she said she is disabled and what can she do? do um, uh, in order to cross uh, uh, the contact line uh, she needs to apply and uh, it is difficult for her and it is difficult to provide answers to such questions really difficult to respond or a gray area so uh, it is difficult to understand uh, the situation and people uh, do not have uh, proper conditions. Uh, the windows are broken and uh, no firm can uh, restore uh, these uh, windows. Uh, so, so some charity organizations, uh, we provide contacts uh, uh, of these organizations uh, in order that they could help people. Uh, and also previous broadcast in Donbass UA in the first uh, uh, Ukrainian channel, this was uh, devoted to such uh, uh, a situation connected with the literacy of journalists and uh, lack of ethics. Uh, when uh, Capacitian Portal um, brought such news, uh, uh, headlines, the um, IDP from Donbass uh, uh, stole a f telephone. So uh, no one says uh, whether it is done by IDPs, whether there is court decision on uh, this and why. Uh, they say that this was done by IDP, and we discussed the issue of the uh, Deputy Minister of Internal Affairs. Uh, uh, they said that uh, the uh, crimin uh, the situation with cr uh, crimes uh, worsened because uh, you have a lot of IDPs, but this uh, uh, ignite ha hatred, and then uh, some people call and say that uh, uh, IDPs should not be accepted because they all terrorists uh, who come from KME and Donbass. So we should uh, establish the dialogue and radio can help us in this. And we are glad that we have such projects, including our um, uh, programs of Ukrainian radio. We establish such dialogue by uh, explaining 
uh, to people by uh, telling about these people. And also some people said uh, in one program why my son was uh, recruited and uh, he defends Donbass, but they are terrorists. And uh, uh, we had uh, uh, ATO participants in our program and they uh, told about their stories about their units, about volunteer battalions uh, who have proper uh, names and that are formed uh, from this uh, people people from Donbass and Crimea and uh, such fake negative information, it uh, is dismantled and, and we need uh, constant dialogue and uh, the threats also are financial and uh, if uh, there will be uh, under financing, so mid-range transmitters, they are really costly and uh, uh, the uh, overall number of uh, transmitters that transmit information to occupied territories, the um, expenditures, uh, they are, uh, we have uh, um, 148 transmitters, but these ones, they uh, consume a lot of electricity, and uh, uh, this is a threat, unfortunately, um, some Buddhists do not have proper understanding of this issue, uh, so uh, there should be proper financing for these uh, transmitters. Uh, so uh, Dmitro said about the stories of IDP, and uh, I have uh, uh, I had one message yesterday. One journalist says about business success of IDP, and uh, uh, one woman, a woman IDP, said that uh, um, you. Um, only say about those who pay you and we didn't expect that you just speak about simple people and about the transmitters uh, so what are the uh, successes and uh, on my working table uh, i have a black and white map and uh, i um, uh, mark the uh, uh, where the new towers were put and a lot have uh, has been done and the network is really big more than 25 points uh, for FM a signal and uh, uh, also um, the medium range broadcasting so this work should continue there should be new towers and uh, Pokrovsk um, tower should uh, provide signal to Donetsk it should be really high those uh, lower towers won't be able to cope also except the towers we need uh, transmitters uh, that can be used used uh, by broadcasters because if the capacity is not enough uh, so this Bakhmut tower won't provide or Karanchunska tower won't provide such coverage that we expected. Our programs are delivered uh, due to uh, Gramatska Radio um, Voice of Donbass and um, uh, affiliates of uh, uh, broadcasting stations and we hope for proper financing to improve technical conditions in order to expand the coverage because this is uh, the product for Donbass, directed at Donbass. Uh, let me add about uh, the team of Donbass Reali, how they find people who will be on the occupied territories listening to our programs, uh, the audience who rec record, they have uh, a receiver and uh, they record and they take, uh, they make such uh, re records uh, and uh, further disseminate these records among their friends uh, and other people except technical question that have, uh, the quality is a big question not only of uh, it not only concerns the occupied territories but also other territories of Ukraine this survey has been um, uh, made public soon uh, as to the level of confidence to Ukrainian mass media on the occupied territories in Donbass and Crimea. Uh, people in Donbass, uh, they are the same, they have the same attitudes as the rest of Ukraine because they 
uh, do not trust in Ukrainian mass media sources. There are differences in percentages, but it seems to me that uh, in order to address the problem of supply of information and getting new audience, uh, listeners and viewers, uh, uh, because the pr products are also manufactured in qu quasi-video, uh, format uh, uh, so the broadcasting stations whose uh, representatives are here today we should influence the general information space uh, uh, sometimes I hear from some experts or those uh, who uh, are not uh, they say that we should establish uh, um, the uh, facilities uh, uh, for broadcasting signal to the occupied territories, uh, but what uh, content would be brought by the signal? Uh, how you would do so that uh, uh, your audience on occupied territories and on mainland Ukraine the trust in you? So the main question, one of the main questions is uh, uh, the Mm, level of trust among audience. Our uh, radio activities now should be assessed by other um, uh, criteria and we should use uh, quite another approaches because we'll uh, operate in wartime conditions and usual methods of dissemination of information does not work uh, in the world for two times uh, the radio was the main tool of communicated information on the occupied territory so we are trying also to find toolkit and opportunity chances uh, to um, expand the audience and to work with the same uh, audience efficiently what we are doing now having uh, the tools uh, such as social networks and the uh, uh, internet we try to expand our audience and uh, seek for the audience not only on the occupied peninsula uh, they are our um, natives uh, and uh, different countries in the world one of our next steps uh, will be uh, to establish uh, the core point of uh, Hayat Radio and Krim uh, uh, news agency in Ankara. Uh, we have our correspondent pop center there and Ankara office uh, and we are establishing our studio there to create content in Crimean Tatar language in Turkish and uh, to you this uh, in our activities as concerns uh, death operations uh, also address our compatriots living in different countries in the world uh, we can't open uh, the uh, centers all over the world but this correspondent network uh, of uh, engaging uh, all people interested in Crimea topic continues we have connections with the London with the USA uh, where our potential listeners uh, reside uh, who are close to us spiritually and West concerns Crimea <coughs> in Crimea we can't operate in full our mass media source was banned uh, among the first ones we are in the register of Russian Federation surveillance uh, uh, and uh, oversight agency we feel now that the interest to our broadcasting station is available. We see that uh, by feedback uh, uh, in social media and uh, um, which we get by post and by criticism because most of our guests, they are uh, people from reality. Ilmi Umerov, Chigos, Taras Ibrahimov, Zhimchugov, uh, 
they are those uh, who are uh, telling about their uh, life situations and they are uh, quite interesting for our audience. Uh, we mm, uh, supposed to get support and understanding of our compatriots in Crimea and uh, uh, their um, willingness to make our product interesting and very so question is uh, um, Crimean Tatar uh, speakers. Uh, now we have on the ear 20 to 80 percent radio 80 percent uh, 80 80 percent of ukrainian language speakers and 20 percent uh, crimean tatar speakers this is not because we do not like crimean tatar language they are just like and we do not have them available if it uh, for example uh, Grace uh, t taught us if you do not have the opportunity just create such opportunities which should nurture these uh, speakers the hosts ourselves we should open journalistic courses and schools uh, and uh, teach uh, Ukrainian and Crimean Tatar speakers they are uh, teach each other uh, on air at our broadcasting station all these methods and and tools which we have uh, to tell in Crimea about Ukraine to dispel the stereotype which is now um, forced uh, there the stereotype uh, after 3.5 years is already present uh, their perception of ukraine is distorted due to this uh, large-scale propaganda attack uh, of russia our activities will continue and uh, I hope that the uh, opportunities of our broadcasts will be extended on not only to Kachovka uh, district of Kherson region uh, and uh, Crimea. Uh, we hope to have the network of radio stations uh, and the age between occupied and Ukrainian non-occupied territories as concerns Crimean topic. Uh, cultural national uh, issues uh, we face them when we wanted uh, to create uh, the series of audio books and the series of documentaries and we uh, have not enough uh, actors for dubbing we face the problem of no Crimean Tatar language speakers so the first was professional theater in Europe uh, uh, and one more uh, uh, in here so on and uh, so we should uh, preserve the language uh, I mean Tatar language and we experience difficulties uh, searching for um, people to engage to work talking about trust of our listeners in Crimea and understanding of Ukrainian society understanding of our mission among Ukrainian society our audience in Crimea differs uh, they are people with different uh, political and geopolitical uh, views and the uh, perception of occupation and annexation as a fact why we should reject those uh, uh, who have been disoriented by the Russian propaganda. We know that everyone who lived in Crimea in 2013-2014 during the times of uh, bold Russian propaganda, should we reject them now uh, and not to give them information, not 
to uh, orient uh, to their requests of alternative information which differs from that information which they are uh, now communicated by controlled mass media which are controlled either by occupational authorities or Russian Federation authorities. They are our compatriots, even those who um, came to Crimea after the occupation, they are almost 200,000 people, not only military men, but also businessmen and uh, family members, uh, uh, various uh, civil servants. Uh, they are people who do not have other sources of information. Uh, just only our source can uh, provide information, uh, true information. So we should keep to Essex uh, uh, standards of the world uh, um, level, such as Radio Liberty have. And we are working for Crimeans to cover Crimeans and all the Crimean society should understand our mission and the same concerns Ukrainians on the mainland Ukraine. Uh, our information platform, not only our information platform and project, and uh, but also other mass media working to cover Crimea and those who are working underground in Crimea. Uh, the society should uh, have understood it, but some portion of uh, uh, society do not want uh, to develop such understanding. They just say, what for we should uh, um, communicate to those uh, Crimean residents. Uh, I remember one article in one Ukrainian newspaper. Uh, I see it uh, always uh, uh, in before my eyes. Uh, it was an analytical uh, one. Analytical analysis and attempt of analytical analysis and uh, the photos were the ruined quarters in some city. Maybe it was uh, some place in Donbass and close to it. Maybe you saw this photograph. Uh, there was a woman, uh, Putin, uh, attack and bring your uh, forces. So the principle is uh, you wanted this occupation, you got it. So the last question to our participants before the round of questions and answers among the audience. Uh, where the we need the voices from occupied territories uh, on our waves. Those uh, opinions which uh, uh, do not uh, coincide with the ones which are um, overwhelming among the society. Yeah, these opinions, uh, sometimes you can hear them in our programs. We give them the uh, platform for speaking. Uh, we not only narrate, not only give the picture of reality. Crimea uh, has been cleared in informational plane. Everyone who disagree with the occupational regime, uh, he or she is, uh, uh, has no right to vote, no right to, to for information. So uh, we provide the platform uh, for everyone to speak. Crimeans, they live not only with politics, but they also experience big social and economic problems and uh, a high level of corruption. And uh, this, uh, uh, both those who are for and uh, against Ukraine, uh, they suffer these problems. Uh, uh, they are our um, 
citizens, that is why we give them the uh, right and opportunity to speak at our channel at any other platform in Ukraine, uh, in Ukraine and Crimea, they do not have this chance. Uh, we are a part of uh, Radio Liberty. Uh, and this is our standards of uh, broadcasting. It is very serious question being uh, on air of uh, one uh, broadcasting station. I was uh, t telling about the Crimean situation and the listener asked, you are telling about the situation in Crimea, but everything is calm there and I know one Crimean Tatar family living in Dnipropetrovsk, but in 2015 they left Ukraine uh, mainland and uh, return to Crimea. The situation is uh, that we unfortunately do not have the chance uh, to get real picture of uh, public opinion in the territory of the occupied peninsula, but if we create there uh, unbiased conditions for sociological survey or referendum, I am sure that most of Crimeans will be f for Ukraine. If the conditions are present when a person uh, feels safe and is not uh, afraid for his or her family, uh, then if they vo voice out opinion, they will not be captured by uh, the Federal Security Bureau of uh, Russia. In 2015, artificial uh, public opinion was molded, uh, the one of uh, Crimeans. Uh, uh, it has not changed uh, much. Uh, we feel this from the information which we get from there and from other indicators and it is very important in this work to get uh, ordinary people's uh, opinions, uh, not uh, uh, politicians, uh, uh, when s uh, just ordinary people uh, enter mainland Ukraine and they uh, tell, uh, tell you about uh, their uh, problems in reality, social problems, the situation has not changed since 2014. On, uh, on the air, we reflect the situation, these different opinions which are voiced out from Crimea, some of them which we do not like and some opinions which are pro-Ukrainian, they are available on the air at our station, but we comment on them and process them. So in this context, talking about processing, for us, a very uh, important source of information from Crimea are ordinary people. We keep uh, uh, connected uh, with them, uh, uh, but we do not uh, uh, disclose the names. The situation is not uh, like the one demonstrated by Russian propaganda. What to do when we hear? the voices and calls, uh, uh, telephone calls uh, uh, on uh, air live uh, since 2014. Every author respond differently, but we do not block them. We the experts uh, and the hosts, uh, they comment and argue. The question of trust is very important for those uh, who uh, reside in the occupied territories in Crimea and Donbass. Uh, for us it was rather hard uh, 
to have 93 years of history of Dnipro station and radio broadcasting station after Shevchenko. It was hard for us not to be propaganda uh, station. Not so long ago there was an air about the corruption on uh, uh, con con control passing centers from the our from our Ukrainian side then uh, Donbass residents they started calling us and saying how much they paid uh, for um, being checked at the check-in centers at the check-in points uh, though when we are talking about these real problems on the ear, then our audience start calling us uh, and the host could be asked live on the ear. I would like to agree with Metro what uh, good we can get from lie, nothing. Uh, if we just uh, make some image uh, of uh, our enemies in Donetsk and Lugansk region and laugh at this I image, if we been like monkeys, just close eyes on the real uh, social problems uh, of our compatriots on the occupied territories, uh, if we are one country, then we uh, will have to address these problems in future, the problems they experience on occupied territories. Uh, my friends uh, who are not journalists, they ask me uh, when uh, we visit occupied territories, they, uh, 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 when you go to Severodonetsk, Mariupol, Avdivka, you are asked, are you for Ukraine or against? We ask those people how uh, big is percentage of pro-Russian uh, attitudes in those towns. Uh, uh, these uh, people, they are lacking in the information space of Ukraine, so we do not know about their opinions, attitudes and moods uh, in the frontline area and in Donetsk and Lugansk region. Uh, when you talked about monitoring and trust, uh, trust uh, is may not exist without uh, uh, both uh, sides opinions besides that uh, our discussion is named uh, radio unites ukraine so if uh, someone uh, can't uh, accept uh, the different opinion but uh, this person would listen to this different opinion. This is the way to understanding and consensus. I have been talking about the public radio, uh, our Hramatsky radio. We uh, can learn, we are able to learn, and uh, now we are given the floor for uh, the round of questions and answers. No. Then I will tell you one story which I mentioned yesterday in Donbass Realia program. This is a story about the most interesting TV plot which I saw on Ukrainian TV about uh, a person living uh, on the other side of the contact line in Donetsk. Uh, once uh, I switched on, on a, my TV set and there was a plot about a young man from Donetsk. Uh, during this occupation period and the situation relatively uh, stabilized and uh, he likes rally, he has a car, uh, a bullied car, 
and he trains and after that he will go to Odessa uh, where he uh, won the second or third place I do not remember but it did not extend uh, that this person suffered uh, there was just track uh, where he trained uh, this train is damaged by mines uh, and uh, also he was asked uh, how you pass the uh, check polls uh, the Donetsk People Republic uh, uh, ch uh, check post guards uh, uh, they did not uh, uh, make me any trouble uh, I easily passed uh, the center then I had problems with Ukrainian side and uh, I felt uh, deep regret that this was Radio Liberty who made this plot uh, uh, you are Ukrainian radio but uh, uh, you are international mass media source uh, I feel regret that no Ukrainian channels uh, uh, give such uh, plots we should understand that people are similar on both sides uh, in the mainland Ukraine in Donbass and Crimea we should understand and and develop this and understand it I also have one memory given the answer to our previous question whether we should give a, a platform for other opinions uh, I asked one person about uh, uh, the check points uh, about the checks and the, che the check points uh, uh, Ukrainian military men uh, are good and uh, uh, our guys, uh, Donetsk military men, uh, they uh, behaved bad. So this person already thinks uh, that uh, uh, Donetsk uh, enemies, uh, they are her soldiers. So now I would like to finalize uh, whether we should work with those people on the other side, uh, having the other opinion, opposite opinion. The more we work with them, uh, the more they would understand uh, that they should be worked with. When we will hear from them, maybe not honestly, that they should be worked with, uh, then we will uh, see that we are not far from resolving the problem uh, one hour and seven minutes before this time thank you for your attention let us uh, perform our function even when we do not think about our mission deeply thank you